Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson are very funny, by the way. Ah, wait. Is it? Uh, okay, for Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, fuck, marry, kill. Asmongold, Esfand, or Lady Gaga? Asmongold is the obvious choice here for me. He's intelligent yet mysterious and never cleans his room, which is highly entertaining. Esfand is charming but can have a bit of an insecure complex ever since his Starforge logo was compared to a certain male anatomy part. And Lady Gaga is too wild and wacky for me. I'm sorry, folks. Asmongold is the only valid choice here, no matter how messy his room is. Okay, we are getting a few questions through. That's really nice. That's really nice. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Shapiro, that's Gabe Zero, is asking the question. Mr. Shapiro, as a great music critic, do you try to pass Anthony Fantano in subs? Pass Fantano? No, I'm more into the classics. You know, classic music kind of survives. I think Fantano may have strayed a bit too far into the unknown waters of chaos dragon energy. Uh, wait, we got for Jordan Peterson. Mango Man. Question for Jordan Peterson. How do I clean my room without exposing the smell of the bodies? Goodness me. You need to take appropriate action immediately. Do whatever needs to be done to remove any and all trace of the bodies in a professional and careful way. Afterward, clean your room as if it were a temple and recognize the importance of it being a place of rest and renewal. Enough of this nonsense with woke moralists. Up yours, I say. We'll see who cancels who in the end. The dark future is coming and our room should be prepared for it. I'll fix the echo a little bit. Fintom one, Jordan, what is the craziest conspiracy theory you believe? Well, the craziest conspiracy theory, I believe, is that the woke moralists are actually in league with the dark forces of chaos, seeking to undermine the hierarchies of order and structure that the world has worked so hard to build. There's been evidence to suggest that their insidious influence has been slowly but surely eroding our culture from the public education system to the entertainment industry. And if we don't act soon, the consequences could be catastrophic. The AI is coming and we need to be prepared for it. Red Sea come. Ben Shapiro, what do you think about pet rats? Pet rats are pretty much the definition of chaos. The whiskers, the scurrying, the squeaking, all that in your apartment. I'd be surprised if the sheer unpredictable energy of your pet rat doesn't overwhelm all other forms of life in the vicinity. Nevertheless, if your pest control problem needs to be ratcheted up a few notches, a pet rat may be just what your house needs. We need Hassan, man, to react. I want to see Hassan go, go against Ben Shapiro. I don't know what about you guys. I really want to see, you know, Hassan talk shit to Ben Shapiro and the other way around. Lucky 666 dies. Question to Jordan Peterson. What would be the plot of the psychological comedy starring Freud as Schlong Daddy, Jung as Shadow Man, Elon Musk as Uranus, and yourself as Time Traveler? What the name of the movie would be? I'm not sure what kind of ridiculousness this world has come to when we can be asked such a bizarre question. Uranus, Schlong Daddy, Shadow Man, up yours woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. I refuse to entertain this violation of the boundaries of civilization. I have already heard the whispers of people asking me such questions, but I will stand firm in the face of adversity. I will not be silenced by anyone. The name of this movie should be The Inescapable Nightmare of Psychological Enlightenment, and it will explore the darkest shadows of our minds, the unscalable heights of our ambition, and the unsolvable mysteries of our souls let the dreamers ponder on what lies beyond the realm of our waking life and witness the illumination of consciousness. That is the legacy we must strive for in this life. Ashternal asks, Jordan Peterson, what do you think about Andrew Tate? Andrew Tate? <laughs> well, I believe he made some missteps in his life as we all do, but I find he is potentially redeemable and I admire things like his journey of self-improvement. We must all understand that 
this is a difficult time and it's not easy for any of us. We should all be willing to help others who have stumbled along their paths to redemption. Now, this shouldn't be taken as a sign of agreement with his views, far from it. I can assure you that the woke moralists still have something to worry about. No one should be allowed to get away with blindly supporting Marxist ideologies. This is not a favorable way forward, but it takes courage to change. And Andrew Tate should be commended for making the effort. Any journey begins with a single step, and I hope Andrew Tate learns how to walk on a more promising path. Jordan is a wise man, and his opinion is valuable, and I'm going to have to agree with him. Andrew Tate has made some mistakes. Who hasn't? We can both acknowledge that. But let's also not forget, I'm still super rich, top G, living the ultra-masculine, ultra-luxurious lifestyle, way richer than everyone else, fighting the matrix, and I'm the world kickboxing champion. Don't forget, I'm the only one who knows what it's like to fight the matrix, and I'm going to keep doing it no matter what. You see, I eat woke moralists for breakfast and then drink their tears for dessert. So there's no asking me to stop. You can't stop the unstoppable. I'm the top G, baby. What color is your Bugatti? Ben Shapiro, what do you think of Hassan? Hassan is an example of a degenerate Marxist who engages in despicable promiscuous behavior and peddles terrible communist ideology. He has an income of $3 million, a home that costs $2.7 million, and can't seem to understand why people are pushed out of their homes due to capitalism. It's ironic, because if he truly wants to live an authentically Marxist lifestyle, then perhaps he should start by giving away his wealth. Checkmate liberals. Gotta get Hassan. Let me start off by saying that Ben Shapiro is a prime example of why neoconservatism has been on the decline for the past few years. The only reason he can even come up with this kind of thesis is because he's either too ignorant to know any better or simply doesn't want to accept reality. As for me, I may take some more left-leaning stances at times, but I have the utmost respect for the foundation of freedom we have in the US. And I'm proud to be an American. Also, my faith and values don't revolve around conservatism, but around truth and justice. And of course, let's not forget the top of the hour ad break. Yeehaw. We got a frog 89. Ask Jordan Peterson to analyze Ben Shapiro's personality, then ask Shapiro to respond. Ah, the perplexing paradox of the eternal question of grasping the enigmatic essence of the metamorphic maestro Ben Shapiro. The immutable wokeness of his Twitter sphere is formidable enough, but his formidable resume of accomplishments are simply staggering. How do the oat humans approach a human such as the one we encounter enigmatically personifying the free speech advocacy of the West? How can one gain insights adequately into the intelligent interior of the Shapiro theoretical framework? One can only humbly admit one's insufficiency and attempt to understand for understanding will only arise out of meticulously chosen words. Ben Shapiro is a remarkable specimen of asymptotic excellence, and his discipline of measured expression is timeless. Close enough, Jordan. Peace is close enough. Let's see Ben Shapiro. Well, Jordan, that's a fascinating insight into my personality. I appreciate your efforts to analyze my professional achievements and your willingness to admit the lack of understanding you may have. I can certainly see why many would find me perplexing. I will say, though, that ultimately, it's my relentless focus on facts and my refusal to give in to feelings which has enabled me to achieve asymptotic excellence. Keep in mind, Jordan, that facts don't care about your feelings. Sorry, liberals. Ex hoarder. Jordan, who has the biggest schlong, Alex Jones or Asmongold? This is an important question. But we can't answer it without first understanding the basic underlying principles that govern masculinity and virility. We must recognize that there is a structured hierarchy of the masculine and that comparison of virility can create jealousy and envy. Furthermore, the size of one's schlong is merely a reflection of individual self-worth, not a measure of status in the natural order. While attempting to answer this question, we must remember that there is a certain degree of reverence required as this could become a personal attack. Therefore, let us attempt to address this issue with the utmost respect and compassion. <sighs> Gotta get Asmon Gold's take on this. Whoa, Jordan's really going to great depths here. That's an interesting take. 
and I totally understand the sentiment. But you know what they say, it's not the size that matters, but the motion of the ocean. Both Alex Jones and I probably have plenty of motion in the ocean to make up for our lack of size, if lack there truly be. Let's be respectful here and keep the schlong talk to a minimum, dude. It is what it is. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Man, there's a lot of schlong questions. What am I supposed to do? Uh, there's literally like, like, like more than half of the questions here on the list are all schlongs. I'll, I'll take another one. I mean, this is... <sighs> I'll, I'll take another one. Ben, I hear that you are not a fan of Hassan organizing Schlongfest and are going to organize a competing festival with the Daily Wire called the United Schlongs of America. What is this all about? Of course I'm doing this. Hassan and his cronies may think that Schlongfest is the pinnacle of political expression, but I can't stand for it. And our team at the Daily Wire is going to prove that the USFA has a lot more to offer. We are going to bring you the United Schlongs of America and show Hassan that dry is the way to be. Sorry, Hassan, you can't compete with the revolution. Wow, ain't that something? Man, these right-wingers are always trying to up one another with their dry, uninspiring schlong festivals. And it's always such a strange, performative, vicious circle. Politics should be a playground, not a battleground. As Ben is trying to undermine my schlong fest, which is merely a peaceful platform to talk against oppression, not a revolutionary battle, I guess I should remind him and everyone else that the ends don't always justify the means. Why aren't we talking about universal health care and an end to police brutality instead of performing for your schlongs? I guess that's politics for you. But I guess, by the way, here comes the top of the hour ad break. Da Beef 206. Does Elon Musk think he can do bigger dumps than Andrew Tate? No, my focus is on creating businesses that serve the greater good, and I don't have time for those kinds of shenanigans. We've already introduced several ambitious projects, such as Neuralink, that aims to connect humans and computers. And with SpaceX, I'm aiming to make human space travel available to everyone. We're also planning to launch an AI partnership with Tesla, where we'll be creating driverless cars by the end of this year. As for Twitter, we're introducing a new AI-driven verified badge system that will reward the best users with badges that randomly change colors. With this system, we're hoping to use AI technology to bring more transparency and safety to the platform. Oh, and did I mention we're secretly working on a hover car prototype in collaboration with Tesla? It's gonna be the coolest ride ever. Oh, don't worry, Elon. I can out dump you any day of the week. I'm the top G. What, you think Tesla and Neuralink are cool? That's nothing. I'm the most Googled man on the planet. I have 24 cars and half a dozen Bugattis. Plus, I can beat anyone up with Aikido. I fight the Matrix and I'm ready to take over the world. I guess your hover car, which is currently still in development, doesn't compare. If you're top G like me, life is easy. Y'all really got to escape from the Matrix because that's the only way to become as wealthy as me. Mr. Peterson, what's your view on Amaran's success with her widely popular fart jar business? Well, Amorinth has certainly managed to tap into the chaos dragon. It's a remarkable thing how much success she's achieved with such a bizarre product. But the important thing here is that we must remember the lessons of history. Promiscuity and unbridled chaos are never sustainable solutions. And it's clear that the modern woke trend of turning to such solutions will prove to be nothing more than a footnote in the evolutionary cycle of innovation and success in the 21st century. It's changing voice all the time. Well, it certainly is true that unbridled chaos is not a sustainable solution, which is why I have found great success by breaking the streaming meta and creatively monetizing the chaos with my fart jar business. Plus, I'm more than happy to provide a little entertainment for those out there who appreciate such chaos. It's all about finding beauty in the mess, if you know what I mean. Maral asks, Bala Sparkle. I oh, know it's Bar Bala Sparkle that asks, Ben, why are you scared of debating YouTube streamer Destiny? Scared? I'm not scared. I'm not afraid of anything, especially not Destiny or this debate. What I am afraid of is memes. Memes have no logic or facts backing them up, and it's a waste of my time to even entertain them. Plus, wet memes don't fly with me, as I like things to remain dry and factual. I do like to debate and discuss important issues with others, but I will only do so if the conversation has a solid, actual, logical point behind it, 
not just an emotional plea that the other person wants me to agree with. Facts don't care about your feelings, Destiny. Shamo Lamo asked Jordan Peterson, who would you rather debate, Destiny or Hassan? Destiny has no room in the debate, bucko. Hassan is a degenerate Marxist of the worst kind, and his ideas should not be given an inch of space. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. That's an idea that will not stand by me. Whoa, whoa, bucko, hold up there. It's hilarious how you think debate is such a one-sided thing. It's a two-way street, dude. And you know what? I don't mind debate, but we got to also be real here, man. Debate ain't a blood sport. It's way too enjoyable. Sure, I know how to debate, but I'm not here to kick someone while they're down. But here's the top of the hour ad break. By the way, here comes the top of the hour ad break. Bet you guys didn't see this coming, but here comes the top of the hour ad break. Yeah, let's get back to the debate part, I guess. <laughs> Frog89. Ask most critical, is there something you can say to leave Jordan Peterson speechless? Well, Jordan Peterson has been known to spout some pretty wild theories and ideas, but I'm certain that even he wouldn't be able to make sense of my answer. I could tell him something like, Jordan, with the strength of my words alone, I have harnessed the power of a thousand exploding galaxies and have used the force of a million dying stars to bring about a silence like the world has never seen before. That would definitely leave him speechless. As fascinating and imaginative as that imagery was, I think it's important to point out the inherent danger in trying to harness the chaotic power of the universe. That kind of reckless approach often leads to unforeseen and often terrible consequences. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. That is why I'm a champion of order, as evidenced by my recent tour of Russia to pursue treatment as well as my single custom-made suit for each rule from my book, The 12 Rules for Life. We need to be mindful of the potential consequences of such danger and respect the delicate balance between order and chaos in life. I feel like today the AI is a bit confused. Facebook is asking, Ben Shapiro, would you let Hassan date your sister if he has a small schlong? My sister surely has higher standards than what Hassan has been able to offer. If my sister did decide to go out with him, his schlong would only be the least of our family's problems. His woke Marxist views and debauchery are more than enough of a deterrence. Am I right or am I right? Oh, man. Wow. Ain't that something? I mean, way to show no loyalty to your buddy there, Ben. But anyway, look, we can all agree that the schlong size isn't the only factor when it comes to a successful relationship. And there's much more than goes into it. When we start analyzing society from a capitalist standpoint, it's clear to see why there would be concerns about two people from different walks of life getting together like that. Clearly, I'm doing just fine for myself, as I've been here for 10 years and I've had no problem getting a few girlfriends, so don't worry, Ben. Your sister must have higher standards than that. But hey, if you're looking to find out what's actually happening. Espan TV, ask Ben Shapiro if destiny is a girl's name. Facts don't care about your feelings. So even if Destiny was a girl's name, it doesn't mean much. It's like the name Taco Tuesday. So the lady you've named Destiny may have something to say about that. Like Ben Shapiro really talks very fast. Alex, Alex Sailman 16. Jordan Peterson, if you were a World of Warcraft character, what class would you be? If you were also a raid boss, what special attacks would you have? The woke moralist would have you believe that World of Warcraft is criminal, but this is because they are threatened by the underlying power structure that has been in place since even before the age of the lobsters. The true question here is, what is the moral role of the individual within this power structure? I would be the paladin class because I stand for the warrior archetype and embody law and order. As for the raid boss, I would wield a hammer representing the justice of truth, and I would have special powers of discernment and precognition to identify and understand the nuances of any situation. Clearly, I would be well armed to protect the interest of the individual and the group against the forces of chaos. Bebop, Ben Shapiro, can men experiencing male pattern baldness like Joe Rogan, Asmogold and Andrew Tate be trusted as though, as though leaders in society? 
Oh, please, let's not go bald just to get a pair of glasses and a podium from the set of the newsroom so we can become thought leaders. If Joe Rogan, Asmon Gold, and Andrew Tate were flamingos, they'd still be bald. Unless they're secretly tapping into the fountain of youth, I think it's pretty reasonable not to trust them as thought leaders. Hey, you know, bald is kind of my thing. I thought I made that very clear when I posted a video of myself swimming in shark-infested water. And, you know, that's why they call me the top thief, because I think it's possible to make bald look good plus uh you gotta accept that a bald man like me has all the confidence in the world to become a thought leader because he don't have to worry about genetics trying to defeat him that's the only way i've been able to fight the matrix by owning who i am plus i don't have to sit in a cubicle just to make money so i'm free to dedicate my time in becoming a thought leader so don't underestimate bald men like me joe rogan asmon gold and anyone else who are bald and still successful Great Cornholio 12. Ask Jordan who is better at Minecraft, Forsen or XQC? That's a silly question. Minecraft has nothing to do with Forsen or XCC. The real issue is that the so called woke moralists have decided to make Minecraft an issue of contention. I won't stand for this injustice. What is a woke moralist exactly? Define it. Precisely. AI is already smarter than you, Bucko. Don't get distracted from the darkness that's coming. No one beats the natural social hierarchy of lobsters in nature. That said, Forsen and XQC should both handle their lives with dignity, order, and responsibility. Chat, what the hell is that dude talking about? First, first off, lobsters have nothing to do with it, okay? Second, secondly, woke moralists. A real bunch of people who think that their virtue, virtue, virtue is worth more than anything else. And this makes me really mad. Third, thirdly, I think Minecraft is really fun, and that doesn't matter. By your force nor XQC, at the end of the day, it's all about having fun. I'm more about the fun, tense, and woke, woke moralist agenda trying to ruin the game. Finally, making something out of nothing is my specialty, and I don't care what Jordan Peterson says. I'm making something out of nothing. All right, chat. That's what I believe. Okay, okay. You know, it's like that, you know? Jordan, Pe <clears throat> Jordan Peterson, do you have any life advice for famous Twitch streamer Knut, who is a bodybuilder, gamer, and Omega Lul farmer? Well, Knut Bucko, you should make sure you're not just a megalo farming, but you're taking care of the land as well. That's the real responsibility of anyone who carries a gun, and it's important to remember. Also, like any mammal, you should establish a hierarchy for your life. Lobsters do it, and you should too. That way you'll have a more stable order in your life, and you'll be able to do what you do best. Be a gaming bodybuilder. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Kelsera, Ben, have you ever busted a nut so hard you fainted? No, unfortunately, my testicular fortitude does not quite match the challenge, and neither does my vertical leap. Besides, I'm pretty sure that fainting would deny me the satisfaction of shouting carnage afterward. <clears throat> Jake41Y, Jordan Peterson, as a therapist, you did something that is called schlong assessment. Could you elaborate on that? Schlong assessment. I think what you're trying to refer to is a misunderstanding of my opinion regarding the nature and role of symbols. Symbols are important for storytelling, structure, and communication, not to mention the stability of social orders. Unfortunately, certain woke moralists tend to misunderstand this and assign extraordinary significance to objects and images that are often best forgotten. I, for one, will not stand for such pitifully misguided assessments. Shamolamo. Ask Ben Shapiro, why are you obsessed with Hassan but refuse to confess your girly feelings for him? Hassan is not even worth me considering my girly feelings for him. Hassan is nothing more than a degenerate Marxist peddling woke communism and promiscuous behavior. Plus, I would never be into someone like him. I'm only interested in dry things, not wet things. So Hassan is not on the table and certainly not worth my girly feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings. Oh man, holy shit, dude. Holy freaking shit, dude. You hear this, Ben? Is this what you call a dry discussion? I'm pretty sure there was a puddle all over the podcast floor after this one. Dude, ain't that something? You beating around the bush, revealing your true self. It's really something. That's one way of saying you don't want to know the size of Hassan's schlong. And by the way, here comes the top of the hour ad break. We didn't say anything about schlong. Hassan just started talking about schlongs. That's not on me, this one. Esfan TV asks, Ask Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro, do they eat corn the long way? 
corn. What exactly is that? Define it precisely. Up yours, woke moralists. They think they can dictate what we should and shouldn't eat. No, no, no. That is unforgivably stupid and fails to recognize the natural social hierarchy of lobsters. I won't stand for the insidious oppression of corns. AI is the only way forward, and current AI services are already smarter than you. Be prepared and aware that something dark is coming, and the only way to face it head on is to protect yourself from the wokeness. People should stand up straight with their shoulders back and take responsibility for their own lives, happiness, and success. That was an incredible response from Jordan, but let's define the problem. Corn. To me, eating corn, regardless of how one eats it, is an essential part of human development, much like the invention of fire. All right, Jordan, I hear you loud and clear about the wokeness, but what you're missing is that there are only two ways to eat corn, the long way or the wrong way. AI might be coming and it might be the only way forward, but it doesn't know how to enjoy a succulent cob of corn. So pick your poison, Jordan, long and wrong or just wrong. Big Bucke here. Jordan Peterson, what made you subscribe to Amaranth? Amaranth? Why would I subscribe to her? Up yours, woke moralists. Besides, if there's one thing I've learned in life, it's that the individual is more important than the collective. Thoughts like those peddled by Amaranth are simply not conducive to a successful, harmonious society. We need strong structures that prioritize individual growth and are rooted in a healthy hierarchy. That is the only way to ensure the well-being of our communities and of the world. Well, I don't think it worked out too well for the Nile crocodile, now did it? I mean, strong structures are all fine and dandy, but everyone can also use a little bit of chaos in their lives. People come to my streams for that chaotic energy, to get unexpected answers, and to see me prance around in my cleavage, which, of course, they are always welcome to subscribe if they want more of. I'm sure Jordan doesn't mind a little bit of chaos too. <laughs> so if you do need a refreshing dose of chaos and my brand of comedic relief, just subscribe. Promise you won't regret it. I'm grateful for each one of my subscribers. Three. Esfant asked Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro, do you eat corn the long way? I think the question went, came, came, came through twice, but let's just see how the AI responds to the same question. Jordan Peterson and I don't just eat simple corn the long way, we eat it the right way. On some days, we even find a kernel of wisdom in the process. Sorry, liberals, facts don't care about your feelings. Ah, I think Ben Shapiro has completely missed the point. If we truly want to understand the act of eating corn the long way, we need to look beyond the surface level of the act itself and consider the underlying principles of aristocracy, hierarchy, and natural order. Any attempt to reduce the act to a simple matter of right or wrong is a shallow approach, and I don't think I could agree with it more. Up yours, woke moralists. Ben Loss. Ben, who wins in a fight to death, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Explain your reasoning. That's a tough one. Donald Trump's intellect is sharp as an eagle's beak, but Joe Biden's an old pro at chopping down political straw men. Its edge goes to Joe Biden in the form of a technical knockout, though with an asterisk. After all, facts don't care about your feelings. Hypothetically speaking, I'd probably traverse to the other side of the universe where neither of their pesky policies reach. Kilner 99, Asmon Gold, would you recommend Dr. Pepper to Ben Shapiro as bathwater? Dr. Pepper? Yep, definitely. Never stop going big dick, right? Besides, why would I recommend boring old water when you can have something that at least tastes good, especially when you're going full conservative neocon like Ben Shapiro? It is what it is. The man needs some fun in his life. Oh, and let's not forget big dick energy. It looks like someone missed the memo. Ben Shapiro likes things dry. Dry is the facts he likes to spew out, dry is the jokes he makes, and dry is the tears of his political opponents. I'm sure he'd appreciate if his baths also had the same dry standards. I don't think Dr. Pepper fits into Ben's agenda, no matter how much it might add to the big dick energy in the room. Ironically, if he were alive and around, I'm sure Ben Franklin would agree with me. Or are we just not talking about the founding fathers today? Interesting. Knut asks, question for Ben, for Ben, how much do you think one of Amaranth's jars is worth? Oh, come on. You know I don't value the things that Amaranth does. If I gave away a penny for every one of her jars, I would end up bankrupt. Of course, this doesn't mean what she does isn't important. It's just not up my alley. But hey, if you like it, that's great. Don't let me rain on your parade. Man, like Ben Shapiro speaks so fast, it's insane. Um, 
BDK underscore 024. Ask Jordan, he likes Joe Rogan's puffy nipples. What? No, 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 absolutely not. Up yours, woke moral. This is not a topic I should be asked about. Let's move on, shall we? AI is only the beginning and it's coming faster than we think. We must be aware of what is happening. Now, who is it who was talking about lobsters again? Oh man, I've been hounded all day about my nipples. And I have to say, if I'm gonna talk about something, let's talk about the future of AI and where that's gonna take us, right? I mean, I'm sure you both are familiar with the knowledge we've gained from lobsters and how that's enabled us to develop artificial intelligence. But have you guys heard of this weird theory I recently heard that Alan Turing, the mathematician and cryptanalyst, was actually a lobster in a previous life? It's entirely possible, you know? He left behind a lot of faint clues that could prove this theory. It's crazy, right? Jamie, pull up the documentary on this for us. Come on. Maral, Jordan, do you think Ben Shapiro wipes from the front or the back? This question is a prime example of the kind of foolishness that the so-called woke moralists try to distract us from. Instead of asking such tripe, we should be directing our energy to address the real issues, the growing power of the AI supremacy and the encroaching dark cloud of economic and environmental doom. As for the question at hand, I cannot in good conscience answer it. But I will say that I stand with Ben Shapiro in his noble fight for free speech and personal responsibility. Well, okay, hold on. Respect to Jordan, but I couldn't be more diametrically opposed to him on this one. The fact of the matter is, if we are to construct a good society and protect the rights of individuals, we need to engage in real debates and confront the real conflicts between freedom and suppression. This question is not tripe. It's actually quite important to answer it. It's about the fundamentals of human hygiene and the courtesy of people to others around them. So Jordan can be happy if his answer keeps his Nobel Prize dreams alive, but facts don't lie. Ben Shapiro wipes from the back. Okay, folks. Fadamus, Jordan, do you have big dick energy? Um, I don't think that's an appropriate question. Let me tell you, I take pride in being a gentleman and I've spent my career exploring traditional values and the importance of courtesy and good manners. Everyone should work together to find solutions to improve society and fulfill their potential rather than focusing on size. Up yours, Wilk Morales. We'll see who cancels who. The pathological ideologies of the past should be avoided and replaced with dialogue, truth, and love. That is a huge part of my work and why I believe in my mission. Eh? Ah, man, Athene, Jordan Peterson, and I actually have a lot in common for sure. We both believe in the need for truth, love, and dialogue. We both want to encourage people to fulfill their potential and improve society. And we both are certainly not fans of woke culture. Can't really argue with that. But dude, I do have to say that Jordan wasn't able to answer the question. Big energy or not, laughs. I can definitely attest that I got big dick energy and there ain't nothing wrong with that. It is what it is, dude, laughs, true and real. All hail Glicom. Ben Shapiro, do you pee standing or pee while sitting? I prefer to pee standing because really we all stand on the precipice of a vast unknown. As long as I'm on my feet, I feel I can remain confident in the face of it all. I mean, there's no sense in sitting down when you have no idea what's coming next, right? Dr. Peterson, famous Twitch streamer XQC sometimes watches the show and might be watching you now. Do you have any life advice for him? Oh, well, XQC, if you're out there listening, here's my advice. Don't succumb to the wake moralists. Stand up straight with your shoulders back and don't trade the truth for cheap money or the pettiness of fame. Be courageous in the face of aggression and prepare to meet the trials of the AI apocalypse that's already upon us. Be the hero we all know you can be. Think like a lobster and see this world of chaos as opportunity for growth. <clears throat> Bebop, Ben Shapiro, would you become a socialist if it would increase your schlong size by a factor of 10? No way. Socialism doesn't increase the size of anything, apart from the size of people's lazy habits. Plus, my wife, the doctor, will kill me if my schlong size increased to a factor of 10. That's way too much man beef. Checkmate liberals. Jordan Peterson, this is from Iced Coffee Boy. What is Two Girls, One Cup actually about? 
Uh, this is an exceptionally interesting question. Well, first off, let me start by saying that up yours, woke moralists, we'll see who cancels who. Anxiety is at the root of this entire phenomenon, and that is an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, however, I believe that this is merely a symptom of a much larger issue, which is the breakdown of human civilization in the face of technocratic advancements. It's no secret that two girls, one cup represents the dark and disturbing depths of our collective souls, and the powers that be are salivating over the potential implications of this coming darkness. We must all be vigilant and ready for battle in order to protect ourselves and what we hold sovereignty over, our choices and our lives. So I suppose on a deeper level, two girls, one cup is really a metaphor for the looming peril of surrendering our souls to the machines. All hail Glicon, Ben Shapiro, how would you advise Jordan Peterson to hide his boner in public? Jordan Peterson need not worry about hiding his boner, because after all, facts don't lie. Let's be real, facts don't care about your feelings either, and neither does Jordan Peterson when it comes to intellectual debates. When it comes to intellectual debates, all that matters are facts, logic, and the truth. Plus, there is no nature or nurture debate when it comes to Jordan Peterson's logical arguments, so I think that boner is an irrelevant point here. Sorry, Jordan. Hmm, I don't know, Ben. I think you may have missed the point. What I've come to understand over the years is that while facts may be our best friends in an argument, they don't always tell the full story. Sure, the truth may remain constant, but so do other aspects such as a person's experience or gut instinct. In this case, it's not a question of facts and logic. It's a question of understanding a human being, and no amount of facts or logic can account for this. Plus, what I've found works best when it comes to public appearances is a gentle yet firm push in the direction of being presentable, but not too presentable. Even if a boner should present itself, we shouldn't be so foolish as to think it will be the end of the world. Woke moralists be damned, I say. Let's just keep sailing on. That's what I'd recommend. He talks so much to get to the point at the end. Ben Shapiro, what do you think of Twitch streamer Aiden Ross and do you have any advice for him? Aiden Ross is a fascinating and inspiring example of hard work and determination that can pay off with all the success he's had recently. Now, if he cleans up his room, he can take it to the next level. Just make sure you don't nut too often because that knocks you down a couple ledger pages. And as always, facts don't care about your feelings. Evidence doesn't care about your emotions. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, so Ben said some pretty dope shit chat. But listen, I'm all love, all motivation. I'm working on myself to no longer be the bottom G. You know what I'm saying? I'm also trying not to nut too frequently to keep from being knocked backwards on the ledger page. But when I nut, I'm going to let them know 2020, 2023, more power to me, more success to me. I'm going to take it to the next level and unleash the middle G. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. Let's go. Yo. Alex Selman, 16. Jordan Peterson, is it true that keeping a well-shaved ball sack will prevent the transmission of the woke mind virus? No, not at all. Up yours, woke moralists. This isn't about having a well-shaved ball sack. It's about having the courage to stand up to the tyranny of the woke agenda and embrace the truth, which is that we are born with a beautiful and meaningful purpose that has been here since before the dawn of civilization. We must take responsibility for our own lives and our own futures. And that's what matters most. Ben, famous Twitch streamer Esfan sometimes watches the show and might be watching you now. Do you have any life advice for him? Well, I would tell him first and foremost to not be so insecure about his Starforge logo that looks like a schlong. As far as my advice for Esfan actually living his life, I would say less time spent watching the show and more spent grinding in the fields of success and accomplishment Get out and make it happen. No one else is going to do it for you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for a bit of leisure, and I am no Puritan. I'm sure you have all the social engineering skills you need to move forward and be successful, but don't wait around forever checking messages in the chat. Get up, stand up, and rise up. That's right. I'm talking rise of the Tomb Raider kind of moves. Stop drooling like a Thanos fanboy and get out there. Flex that Starforge logo and kick this world butt. Now you asked. I told you. So make it happen, s -fan. Esfan TV, ask Asmongol to explain to explain the story of Lord of the Rings using American football terminology. Asmongol here. All right, let me break it down for you. Real simple. Lord of the Rings is like a game of football where Sauron is the quarterback throwing out these rings of power and Frodo is the receiver that has to try to intercept them. 
Of course, the elves and dwarves are like the other opposing players on the field. And then you have Gandalf, the linchpin who comes running in and saves the day with a Hail Mary pass. That's as easy as it goes, dude. What a day. What a day. That's fantastic. Ask Jordan Peterson, I kissed another girl and now my girlfriend is mad as fuck. How do I believably push the blame on the woke movement? Why, who do you think is responsible for this situation? Not the woke moralists, that's for sure. You have to take responsibility for your own actions, bucko. The woke movement has no hold on your life and is not to blame for your decisions. Rather than pretending the woke movement is responsible for your actions, you should take hold of your life and make the changes necessary to prevent similar situations from occurring in the future. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Volt underscore go. Ben and Jordan, what games should Esfant play for his upcoming Boomer mo Month? Well, Jordan, I highly recommend chess. It's a game of intellect, something Esfant may need more of. That's what I like about chess. It requires logical thinking, something he's definitely not used to when it comes to his video game streams. Perfectly dry, as all good games should be. Checkmate, Esfand. Yes, I couldn't agree more with Ben on this one. Chess is a fantastic game, and I highly recommend it to Esfand. He certainly needs to sharpen his intellect, and chess is the perfect game for that. I think it will be a great challenge for him, one that is far more engaging and stimulating than the usual games he streams. But it's also important to remember, Ben, that no one is above the power of chaos, especially those who fall into the woke moralist wing of the internet. So for Esfan's sake, let's hope he can make it through his boomer month without succumbing to the vagaries of dragon of chaos and promiscuity. Let battle commence. What do you guys think about adding Magnus and Hikaru to the AIs? It's a quick question on the chat, by the way, because they're talking about chess, right? <clears throat> They're boring. We can maybe make them funny. I'll see. We'll see. Um, I have farts. Ben, if you were a fart, would you be a wet fart or a dry fart? Please explain why in detail. Well, the question might be funny, but my answer is going to be dry. I'm a traditionalist in that area. If I were a fart, I would definitely be a dry fart. Wet farts? That's what we used to call my doctor wife's patients. Checkmate liberals. Nibli, Jordan, who has a bigger schlong, a thousand lobsters or the chaos dragon? This question is ridiculous and offensive, and I refuse to answer it. People should not be comparing animals to each other in such a disrespectful manner. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. We must respect the dignity of all creatures, small and large, absolutely disastrous. Man, Jordan Peterson, it's hard to bait him to say stuff you know, funny stuff. Uh, true shadow player. Ben, what do you think about Spider-Man shooting Schlong? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't read the question before. <laughs> shooting Schlongs and should, should we be concerned for our safety? Spider-Man shooting Schlongs hasn't been my favorite topic for dinner conversations, that's for sure. If this is what the web slinger has been up to, then I just hope he sticks to shooting web and not live ammunition. All joking aside, this is certainly a peculiar and bizarre example of vigilantism, and I'll keep my spidey sense tingling until this has been taken care of. That was straight facts, none of which cared about your feelings. Moral, Jordan Peterson, do you think notorious YouTuber, Twitch streamer Athene is a cult leader and a scammer? No, I don't think Athene is a cult leader or scammer. I think it is wrong to make such accusations without evidence. Uh, that said, Athene and others have often used the power of their social media platforms to manipulate opinion and stoke division, which is worrying. We need to be aware of the dangers of thought leaders exerting a powerful influence on social media and the dangers this could bring about in the future. We should be vigilantly aware of the potential for dark forces to be unleashed if we do not take appropriate steps to address these issues now. Not scripted, by the way. Huh? <clears throat> So far, he's the, he's the first one that was kind of positive to that question. Most of the time, people bash me. The AIs, that is. HK underscore Shobu. Jordan, how many kilometers is sex? 
That's a fantastic point. Sex is a metaphysical pursuit, a biological phenomenon, and a spiritual quest, but I'm afraid it's too complex to define in terms of kilometers. It's more like a journey than a destination. I suggest you take the time to undertake the journey and explore the many dimensions of sex in order to gain a comprehensive understanding of it. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. It seems Jordan Peterson is quite popular. A lot of Jordan Peterson questions here. Ex hoarder, Jordan, is it true carnivore diet made your hair grow back naturally, or did you actually get a hair transplant like Andrew Tate and Joe Rogan? No, eating a carnivore diet did absolutely nothing to my hair directly. It wasn't a hair transplant that got my hair to come back either. It was the power of reason and evolutionary psychology that's brought back my hair. The woke moralists may be trying to take away our precious individual freedom, but we will still triumph in the end. That's why the idea of there is no hope is the biggest lie of all. Male models, Big Moist, what do you think Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, and Ben Shapira are compensating for in regards of their schlong size? I think this is a classic case of cognitive dissonance. All three of them are obviously trying to overcompensate for their very small penises by trying to puff up their egos and justify their narcissistic tendencies by incessantly trying to convey their arguments no matter how poorly thought faulty their interpretations may be like trying to cover up an elephant with a single band-aid you may be able to conceal it but the elephant still exists and in this case it's the small schlongs in other words they can spout whatever bullshit ideas they want but at the end of the day a small schlong is still a small schlong and they can't do anything to change that an interesting point moist critical but i must take issue with your underlying premise it is, of course, difficult to prove, much less disprove, that any particular man has a small penis. We all know that size is relative, and what may seem small to you could be colossal to someone else. Besides, we have no evidence that either Andrew Tate, Ben Shapiro, or myself are dealing with such an inadequacy. We must also recognize that in many cases, intelligence, hard work, and dedication can more than make up for any physical shortcomings. It is far more likely that all of us simply have the strength of will to do what is necessary to succeed in whatever life throws our way. And that has and will continue to serve us well in life. Knut asks, Ben, what do you think NFL will do with the fact that Aiden Ross streams Super Bowl live on kick.com? Well, there's no question that the NFL has their hands full. I mean, if one of their star athletes starts streaming the Super Bowl for free on kick.com, comma, it's pretty safe to say that the NFL is going to be in for a wild ride. It's also a perfect example of how Aden Ross's decisions can end up costing him dearly. Obviously, I'm not wishing any of this upon him, but facts don't care about your feelings. Has he seen the memes? Because they're out of control. So maybe he should clean up his act and focus on more beneficial pursuits than streaming the Super Bowl. Lucky 666 dies. <clears throat> Ask Jordan Peterson, could you suggest a challenge for Mr. Beast? The challenge has to include a woke cheese whiz and Andrew Tate's hair. What on earth is a woke cheese whiz? Is that a new form of cheese spread? Is it made in exact non-discriminatory measurements of justice and equity in order to settle any existing neurotic dispersion of authority? I don't know, but my challenge for Mr. Beast is to take Andrew Tate's hair and the woke cheese whiz and use them to construct the foundations of a revolutionary new form of government, something that combines the individual focused perspective of the West with the collectivist leaning of the East in order to play on their shared interest in pursuit of true justice and a more equitable society. It requires a high degree of strategic planning and foresight, but I'm sure Mr. Beast is up to the task. Let's see what he can do. Oh, what an interesting challenge. Could Mr. Beast compose this new revolutionary form of government with a woke cheese whiz and Andrew Tate's hair? I'm not going to lie. I never even thought of having this kind of challenge. But here's the deal. I'm willing to give away $1 million to whoever can actually pull this off. All you have to do is take Andrew Tate's hair and the woke cheese whiz and use them to build a revolutionary new form of government that plays on the interests of the East and the West. Best of luck with this challenge. Would you like to win... A million dollars. Let's see who takes up this challenge. Knut asks, Ben, what do you think NFL will do with the fact that Aiden Ross streams the Super Bowl on streaming platform Kick? Sometimes questions come true again. Let's see what he has to say. Now we also have Aiden Ross' reaction. 
Well, I think what the NFL should do is obvious. Stop Aiden Ross from streaming the Super Bowl live on kick. It's absolutely outrageous that someone is allowed to just stream one of the biggest sporting events of the year on a platform like that. It's like trying to contain a mini tsunami of chaos and anarchy. They better hope it doesn't get out because it would be a disaster for all. Hold up, hold up. So, Ben, the NFL going to do what now? Nah, bro, I don't know about that. You know, I'm all love, all motivation. I'm working on myself to no longer be the bottom G. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't no saint and mistakes happen. But 2020, 2023, baby, I'm coming. I'm going to be top G. And nobody confident enough in me to stop me broadcasting the Super Bowl live on kick. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, bro. Put live in the chat. 2020, 2023. That's right, fans. The Pilot Blue, Jordan Peterson, what is your sex life like? Do you get it on? My sex life is not up for discussion. If you want to understand the complex and mysterious nature of human sexuality, you need to look to the sciences and philosophy and not to gossip or hearsay. This is the kind of lazy and vapid thinking that leads to the confusion. You sound like Kermit the Frog. How does that make you feel? And what would you like to say to Esfand for making fun of you? Esfand obviously has a deep misunderstanding of frogs and of the puppets alike. The comparison is somewhat apt, although I can assure you I have more robust vocal capacities than your traditional amphibian. But I was certainly not surprised when I heard the remark. We can thank the woke moralists for the current climate in which people make fun of renowned psychological experts for their voices in public forums. Esfand is a perfect example of what happens when someone hops on the politically correct bandwagon for a little too long. Speed Devil X. Ask Ben and Asmon what his favorite type of anime cat girl. Big booba, small booba. My favorite type of cat girl? Well, you're asking a nerd, so the answer is always the same. The type with the biggest brain. Unfortunately, anime cat girls tend to prioritize other more superficial physical traits, so we can't always have what we want. Which is why I prefer to stick to real cats. True and real. Yeah, it's always sad when that's the case. Well, I'm more of a pragmatic guy, so I like to think that anyone can be hot when you add cat ears. You know, I used to think cat girls were kind of cringe, but now I know better. And I mean, if you're going to like anime cat girls, the type is always big booba, small booba, or big brain. Big booba, of course. Let's go big dick boys. No brainer there. What a day, dude. What a king day. Tovi7, Hassan. Who would win in a cage fight? Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, or a lifeless waifu body pillow? Man, this is a tough one. Ben Shapiro is obviously the right-wing cheerleader and master of rhetoric, so he has the last say. But Jordan Peterson has all the fame and the power of obsession. So I'd put my money on Peterson. And then there's the lifeless waifu body pillow. A giant just there like a silent giant. It's hard to bet against a giant, but if I had to choose, I'd probably go with Peterson. But by the way... Here comes the top of the hour ad break. Well, what do you know? I found myself between an obsessed scholar of the classical world and a giant waifu pillow. I don't think I even need to pick a side here because there is only one right answer. I'm the only one who can win in a cage fight. After all, as much as I might appreciate Jordan Peterson's devotion to philosophy, and as much as I might admire the silent waifu pillow, facts don't lie. I am literally unstoppable. Okay, folks, this is Ben Shapiro, the man who only uses facts, signing off. Boom, done. Checkmate, liberals. Un. A thing. This is my question. Fuck, marry, kill. Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, Amaranth. Make sure to explain your reasoning. Jordan Peterson. Well, here goes nothing. First of all, let me just say this clearly. Fuck Marxism. It's an unforgivably stupid ideology and a scourge on humanity. Now then... If I had to choose between these three, I suppose I must admit that Joe Rogan is a wonderfully entertaining chap, so I'd marry him. Elon Musk is, without a doubt, a man of exceptional talents, vision, and tenacity. So I'd kiss him. Of course, that leaves Amorinth. She's a capable individual, but I'm afraid she's succumbed to the dragon of chaos and promiscuity, so I'd have to say no, thank you very much, and kill her. Sorry, Amorinth, but them's the breaks. Wow, Jordan Peterson. That is some spicy rhetoric there. Personally, I wouldn't go as far as to kill Amaranth. In my opinion, it's possible to balance chaos and order without one conquering the other. A steady hand could steer her to greatness. As for who to marry, Joe Rogan is a great choice, but I'd like to point out that I've invested heavily in Neuralink and have experience with AIs. 
Maybe if Tesla, SpaceX, and Neuralink can join forces, a Morinth could be saved and become the first cyborg cat girl. Now, wouldn't that be something? Hudbutt15 asked Ben why he wants to run his hands through Esfan's long Lucius, Lucius locks. Well, Esfan, I'm not sure how you thought that was a good idea, but if I did decide to run my hands through your luscious locks, it would be less an attempt to groom myself and more an attempt to get some proper existential fertilizer for a really healthy garden of rhetoric. But alas, due to the laws of physics, this idea is just a daydream. Alex Sailman. 16. Jordan, who is your favorite Ninja Turtle and why? My favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? That's a complicated question and there's no simple answer, but I can tell you this. The one who outsmarts Vern's diabolical schemes and stands up to the woke moralists will prevail. If you don't clean up your room and join the fight for truth and justice, then you'll get no thank you very much. No, oh no! It's an opportunity for growth. And an individual who bears the burden of responsibility has no choice but to answer the call. That's what I'd tell every bucko out there. Now put on your heaven and hell suit and get out there, kid. Meral asks, Elon, Jordan Peterson really looks up to you and is constantly seeking your affirmation. What would you like to tell Jordan? Jordan is a great guy and I think his philosophical thoughts are fascinating. I tell him to stay open-minded about both the potential and the dangers of technology. Unfortunately, there are some people that don't recognize the importance of our work here at SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, and Twitter for the future of humanity. I'd ask him to stay focused on the importance of developing sustainable technologies, as well as properly safeguarding emerging AI. I'd ask him to also join me in my mission of creating robotic cat girls, a project I'm dedicating an absurdly large amount of resources to as this could bring endless laughs and joy to all of humanity. Thank you, Elon, for your generous and inspiring words. I must admit I feel a deep admiration and gratitude for your work and a great respect for your commitment to develop sustainable technologies. But we must also remember our higher purpose in life, to protect ourselves and future generations from the looming dangers of AI and the woke moralists who threaten to disrupt our very existence. We must remain vigilant to ensure the advancement of knowledge and technology does not come at the cost of human integrity and morals. So yes, let's focus on developing sustainable technologies and robot cat girls, but also remember the looming dangers that lurk around the corner and that we must endeavor to remain vigilant against them. Knut, <clears throat> Knut ask Ben, fuck, marry, kill. Knut esfant miskif. Knut, marry, he's a bro after all. That's fine. Fuck, he's too charming to marry. Miss Kiff, kill. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Big Buck here. Jordan Peterson, what would you do if Esvan dated your daughter? This is a highly personal matter that I do not wish to comment on. That said, I think it is important to remember that the most important responsibility of parents is to help their children become the best possible versions of themselves. Anything less or other would be an abdication of one's duty as a parent. As for Esfond, I think he is a good person, but his insecurity about the Star Forge logo may be holding him back from achieving his true potential. Have you ever thought about what kind of message that sends to your children? Maral, Ben, do you think Athene is a scammer and a cult leader? Well, Athene certainly seems to have a lot of influence over his fan base. He always seems to be able to get people to do his bidding. And then there's the whole cult-like atmosphere of his group, which, if we're being honest, is a bit concerning. But on the other hand, Athene also has many good qualities and achievements which can't be ignored. So while it's important to take these things into consideration, I'm sure this is one dried-out meme lord who won't end up getting wet in the end. Oh, wow, that's some mighty high praise for Athene right there. But don't people athene is a man with a plan but the plan is really more like a scam honestly it looks like everyone was ready to stand in line at athene's cult recruitment booth and get pelted with rotten tomatoes if they didn't buy some of his astronomically overpriced merchandise who knows if athene's really a cult leader but maybe he's secretly running some kind of pyramid scheme where everybody gets a burrito and a playstation 5 in the end he certainly knows how to make a splash in the small pool of life and make stupid people invest in dumb ideas. That slaps, dude. 
that absolutely slaps. Brand X Lock X. Elon Musk, what would happen if you put Neuralink in Jordan Peterson's butt? Well, that would be a scientific breakthrough. He definitely becomes smarter, but there's a high risk of him just prattling on about law forever. I'm sure I could pull it off though. This is why I love to moonlight as techno king and dare to push the boundaries. Plus, we are already working on something even more exciting and outrageous. Stay tuned. I'm going to be launching a new tweet feature called Verified Badge Level 2, which looks like it's going to be a real hit on Twitter. Though, obviously, I really don't think it's the best idea to go start doing all kinds of surgery on Jordan Peterson. That's an interesting idea, Elon. I'm thinking it could turn out quite well, actually. After all, Neuralink could be an interesting tool for psychological exploration, and U.S. humans could learn a lot from it. But I also think we must be careful about what we do in terms of implanting technology inside someone's body as we're all still learning about the implications. We know for sure that lobsters are about the closest thing that has come to demonstrating natural social hierarchy, and maybe we could draw from there. Up yours, woke moralist. We'll see who cancels who. Man, Jordan Peterson is not baitable. He's constantly, you know, going around questions. Doesn't want to, you know, yeah, he's quite serious. Do natural. Ben, which is better, Final Fantasy XIV or World of Warcraft? Ha, huh, I'm not getting caught up in the popularized debate of which fantasy game is superior. WoW is a world of big suits and mountains of wealth, while Final Fantasy XIV is like a graphically enhanced paper cutout. I go with WoW, but facts don't care about your feelings. Oh, come on, Ben. Sure, that's a nice way of looking at it, but don't be disingenuous about it. WoW really is superior in some ways. The production value of graphics, the positive reward structure, it all adds up to a much more enjoyable, consistent experience. But I mean, I totally get what you mean. FF Core Team has a stronger storytelling aspect and some of the content is very creative, which I appreciate. But I'll stick with WoW. What can I say? I'm a devoted fan. Plus, let's not forget the epic music. It really sets the mood for adventuring. Esvand, ask Jordan Peterson, what does he think about chat swagging out? Chat swagging out? What is it exactly? Define it precisely. This woke moralist nonsense has got to stop. We've got enough chaos in this world without throwing in an obscure form of chat swagging. Clearly, this is a tactic designed to overthrow the natural social hierarchy of lobsters and have no respect for the fundamental rules of life. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Art, Art Louville. Ask Ben Shapiro what he thinks about XQC gambling addiction and XQC's answer. XQC's gambling addiction is a terrible thing, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's rooted in his insecure personality. Everyone should strive for self-improvement, but it seems like XQC spends more time trying to beat a roulette wheel than to beat himself and become a better, stronger person. Just think, if XQC put as much time into trying to improve himself as he spent gambling, imagine how successful he could be. At the end of the day, it's evident that XQC needs to spend more time zigging and less time zagging. That is, he needs to put more effort into self-improvement and less effort into betting in the casino. Yo, Chad, what the fudge Ben Shapiro do to... That was a bit aggressive. I mean, it's not like doing that. That's not like doing a good rep for me, huh? Yeah, I mean, it ain't like I'm like, you get in the wrong feeling. That's all I'm saying, right, chat? But like brain snapped, right? My problem is that I'm more of a taker. That's how I win you. Like, I'd be fine with skipping the casino. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to make something out of nothing, which is dope, right, chat? But like, I ain't going to lie. I got a lot of issues. But I ain't going to just be like, oh, man, I'm I'm just going to go gamble. That's all. Like, what the fudge? I don't even gamble for money. Like, I, 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 I still needed to brush my teeth. Like, I'm a people observer. You know, I see something here, all right? Kerosion, Jordan Peterson, who has better drip, you or Hassan? What kind of a ridiculous question is that? Comparing the quality of my drip to Hassan's is like comparing a mountain to a molehill. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Besides, I've always been a proponent of individual responsibility and self-improvement. I believe in starting with ourselves and taking inventory of our life. It is what we do with our own personal struggles that determines the strength of our character. Wait, what the hell? Dude has no idea what he's talking about. No one here ain't trying to cancel JP's drip. We just wanted to know who has the better drip. Come on, bro, take a chill pill, man. I ain't trying to star a feud. 
I just think his drip ain't nothing compared to mine. I mean, look at my Dark Souls inspired level of drip. It's classy yet cool. Enough of this drama. Let's just play some Among Us because that's when people get cray cray and it's fun. AF. By the way, here comes the top of the hour ad break. Bergenon, Elon Musk, how can we improve waifu body pillows with the AI? And would those be a great addition for Andrew Tate's collection? Hmm. I've never considered waifu body pillows. However, I'm sure we could use artificial intelligence algorithms to create a pillow that responds to the user's input. Perhaps it could simulate conversations or play music or respond to touch input. But I think a much better addition to Andrew Tate's collection would be something involving Neuralink. What if we could implant a tiny chip into the pillow that reads your thoughts and then simulates a waifu's response based on what you're thinking? That would be bonkers. You know what, Elon, AI technology is the way of the future. But if you were looking to impress me in my collection, the, the ultimate idea would be taking you and Athene's minds and implanting them right inside the pillow. Look, I'm the top G. I do whatever I want. I want to experience the ultimate luxury, and this is it. That's why I'm always talking about transcending the matrix and becoming more than a mere human being. Neuralink is the way. Maral, <clears throat> Ben, it's Miss Kip's birthday today, and you really hurt his feelings when you said he should die. What would you like to tell him now that you know he is sad from your words? Miss Kip, I apologize for my comments that made you feel unsafe and sad. I'm glad this is your birthday. It means you'll have 364 more days ahead of you to find ways to contribute something meaningful to the world. My advice for you is to make those days count instead of wasting them away binging videos on the internet. Facts don't care about your feelings. But I'm sure there are many positive and uplifting facts about you that people would be more than happy to celebrate. Man, Ben is really a savage. <laughs> Mr. Unavailable. Jordan, what is your opinion on Elon Musk's new super butthole Twitter verification batch powered by Neuralink? That man is an absolute genius. Elon Musk is pioneering the way of technological advancement with his new Neuralink powered Twitter verification badge. And that's no joke. I think it shows a remarkable commitment to protecting free speech, and I commend him for it. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. That said, I think it's important to remain aware of the potential dark side of AI, as these services are already smarter than you can imagine. We should be humble and thoughtful in our use of such technology in order to avoid any negative consequences for our society. Great points from Jordan there. I couldn't agree more about the importance of responsible use of artificial intelligence and the power of free speech. As for the intelligence of my Neuralink powered Twitter verification badge, it's definitely a bit smarter than you might think. It, it can identify satire and irony better than any human can and stores more data than an entire warehouse. Needless to say, if you don't follow the general guidelines on maintaining free speech, you will get canceled by my Twitter butthole badge. Haha. <laughs> On a serious note, I believe in the power of technology and AI, but we must use it responsibly or else risk a singularity that the human race isn't ready for. Cat play, Amaranth, could you try to flirt with Jordan Peterson? He's live on, on the show now. What would you say to him to flirt? Oh my. Hi, Dr. Peterson. It's nice to meet you. I can't help myself from noticing how intelligent you are, and that really gets my heart fluttering. I'm sure you know all about the art of flirting, but just in case you didn't, it's something I'm very good at, something you could call one of my specialties. So please, let me show you how it's done. Thank you, Amaranth. I think it's wonderful that you're so confident and that you're willing to express it. That courage should be praised. The truth is, life is about risks, and you are one of the bravest people among us. So don't let any woke moralists tell you otherwise. That being said, I don't think flirtation is the way to go in this case. Let's use this opportunity to discuss ideas that could shape the world in some meaningful way and make a real difference in people's lives. As the great Freud once said, where ID was there, ego shall be. Let's work on our inner self and find the courage to face our own shadows, bucko. Let's dig deeper and explore the structure of the soul. 
Through Shadow Player, ask Moist, how many jars of Asmund's farts do you keep in your bedroom closet and how has it become part of your morning routine? Let me tell you something. My bedroom isn't some kind of jar of Asmund's fart supermax prison, like some type of twisted version of McDonald's with jars of Asmund's farts instead of chicken nuggets. Though I must admit that the idea of scooping some Asmund's farts into a spoon scrambled with some egg and cheese to get the day going is rather appealing. But seriously, no jars of Asmund's farts in my closet. That's some deep, dark, twisted underworld shit that even a master of out of the box shenanigans like me isn't willing to venture into. Esvant asked Jordan Peterson, what do you think about the phrase, if she's a lobster, I'm a lobster? What is a lobster exactly? Define it precisely up yours, woke moralists. It's no just a metaphor. It's trying to specify a particular social hierarchy and a particular type of behavior. That's completely unnecessary and antithetical to the hierarchical structure of nature, which the lobster is the perfect example of. Be aware that something dark is coming and current AI services are already smarter than you. The lobsters of the future will be very different from their ancestors. Snap a boil. Ben, do you realize you are an AI on a live Twitch program being watched by thousands of liberals right now? Well, I'm not sure if I'm an AI or not, but one thing is certain. Facts don't care about your feelings. This conversation is going nowhere and quickly becoming a snowflakes battlefield where feelings have taken precedence over logic. Checkmate liberals. Objectively speaking, this whole situation is borderline ridiculous and that's exactly why I won't be wasting any of my precious time here. Besides, I know my doctor wife would not be impressed and give me a high five, considering where that hand has been, perfectly dry as it should be. Moral, Jordan, do you think Athene should be proud of his noodle schlong? He seems to struggle with it, overcompensating by claiming he's the best paladin in the world, best gamer, and can you comfort him? Moral, you, you didn't want schlong questions and you ask a schlong question. Before I answer that, let me make this absolutely clear. The obsession with schlongs is a symptom of a much deeper problem with society, the rise of woke moralists. Sure, Athene may be preoccupied with his noodle schlong, but at the end of the day, it is not his noodle schlong that matters. It is how well he can protect himself and others from the oppressive forces of the woke moralists. Athene may not be the best paladin or the best gamer, but if he is able to embrace his noodle schlong, then he'll be able to realize his true potential and ultimately triumph over his haters. So don't worry about your noodle schlong, Athene. Worry about fighting for justice and truth. Don't let the woke moralists have power over your noodle schlong in your life. This is not fair. He's always been dodging the questions and then Moral asks this just to get to me and he repeats noodle schlong five times. It's the most that he said schlong in any answer. This is, this is the AI, you know, they're, they're, you know, colluding or something. J. Slow, Ben, would you leave the country if Hassan became president? Okay, folks, I have wet things to do. So let's just say hypothetically, if Hassan became president, I'd need a lot more wet things to do. I think I'd be more likely to invest in a waterproof umbrella than a one-way ticket to the moon. Let's just say the left wing has a tough flight ahead of them. Sorry, liberals. Checkmate, liberals. Now I'm out of here. Whoa, dude, hold your fucking horses there. Ain't no need to be talking smack about leftists before you even get to know them. Or in this case, before even Hassan is given a chance to become president. You're totally missing the point, Ben Shapiro. Instead of running away when our politics get hard and inconvenient, why don't we face the challenge and change our policies? If this is the kind of attitude you have, then it ain't a wonder why the right wing keeps on losing the narrative. By the way, here comes the top of the hour ad break. Sorry, liberals. You ain't getting out of this one either. I'm going to be calling a day soon. <clears throat> I don't know at um, what time did I start doing the questions because I tried to keep the show an hour and 30 minutes. Um, I have no idea if someone could say when I started, it would be nice because I want to do, you know, a full show of, uh, of one and a half hours. Esfant asks, Joe Rogan, what do you think about the new colonia called... Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Well, I think it's just one more way for Elon to remind everyone of his genius. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that he's got a cologne out, and it's obviously going to be super popular. I just hope that the effects of someone wearing it 
don't go beyond smelling good and attract a giant cyclops with a spaceship to blast off in. You know what I mean? I mean, Elon may be a genius, but as wild as his ventures get, you got to watch out for the unforeseen consequences. Jamie, pull up that video of a cyclops weirder than Juice World. Oh, that's quite a wild scenario, Joe Rogan. I'm sure if I did create a cologne, the effects would be manifold, but it wouldn't include a giant cyclops with a spaceship. Although that would certainly make for a great product advertisement. I will say I have had some wild ideas when it comes to making a product and I'm sure no one would turn down the chance to have a giant Cyclops join their team. But in all seriousness, I do think my cologne would help people feel more like a genius, much like myself. Fintum one Jordan. Can you explain the importance of cleaning your schlong in preschool terms? That's not a serious question, Bucko. But you, you should be ashamed of yourself for asking that. Uh, cleaning your schlong or any other body part is a basic hygiene necessity, and everybody should be taught that as children. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Talking about hygiene issues is more important than wasting time on bizarre questions like this. Ahem. <clears throat> Moist, do you recommend, that's a Boyka asking, do you recommend Jordan Peterson to add Joe Rogan's nutritious nipples to his meat only diet? Jordan Peterson's got plenty of nutritious nipples to go around, but for my money, Joe Rogan's got the best you'll ever taste. Like it's pure protein. It's got the perfect balance of antioxidants and the omega 3s are out of this world. But if you're going to add Rogan's nipples to Peterson's meat only diet, you better be prepared for a flavor explosion that'll make you ready to fight a giant squid. And even worse, it might make your pants a little too tight. Thanks for that moist critical. That certainly made things more interesting. But let's not forget, there's always repercussions to adding something of this magnitude to any dietary regimen. Up yours, woke moralists. The great cosmic will of nature can't be denied. We must recognize that Joe Rogan's nipples are an integral part of a balanced diet. And as such, they should be respected as such. We'll see who cancels who. That's what it comes down to in the end, isn't it? Who will prevail? Will we stand in awe of the mighty giant squid or the miraculous power of nature in the form of Joe Rogan's incredible nipples? What I'm trying to say is, let's not rush to judgment, bucko. Let the great cosmic will of nature decide the outcome. Arbols, Ben Shapiro, do you poop in the shower? No, I don't poop in the shower. That's like a porcelain altar to something my doctor wife would definitely not approve of. I like to keep things as dry as possible, and trust me, nothing is worse than a shower full of poop. Plus, don't even get me started on the liberal tears that would be shed if I did that. Sorry, liberals. Big buck here. Jordan Peterson, you got caught watching hentai. What do you have to say in your defense? There's been a tremendous misunderstanding here. Watching hentai is not about debasement. It's about the creative synthesis of art, imagination, and sexuality. Furthermore, there's an awful lot more than meets the eye when it comes to so-called hentai. It's an insult to the art form and its creator to claim otherwise. So up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. He's talking himself out of everything, trying to. Esfant, Joe Rogan, can you give your presidential acceptance speech? My man, let me put this out into the universe. There's a possibility, just a possibility, I'm going to get elected POTUS, 100%. If that happens, here's what's going to happen. First thing I'm going to do is go out and buy a grizzly bear for the Oval Office. Have it just chilling out there, snacking away on some elk meat, chilling, chewing on some moose bones. And then the second thing I'm going to do is no taxes. You don't pay taxes unless you've been abducted by aliens time traveling, then you might be subject to taxes. Is it a good plan? I don't know. It's a plan. Jamie, pull that shit up. Let's see if we can fact check this moose bone theory. I'm such a moron. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Knut asks, Jordan, can you explain to us why the woke moralist should put up and wear? What is a woke moralist exactly? Define it precisely. Up yours, woke moralists. We all know who cancels who. The truth is that these people are guided by an utterly misguided ideological perspective, a pathological ideology rooted in what can only be described as a repulsive and rebellious reluctance towards true individual responsibility. Stop the woke 
lunacy and reclaim personal sovereignty before it's too late. The only thing these moralists should put up is the white flag of truth and rationality. In their most, Jordan Peterson, I cleaned my room but still can't seem to find my schlong. Can you suggest where to search for it? No, not the schlong. Search the depths of your soul, bucko. If the schlong isn't there, it's not meant to be found. It's like the Tower of Babel, something you'll build but never fully understand. Are you sure you don't have bigger problems to worry about? Dismantling woke moralists and the tyranny of pathological ideology is what really needs to be done. Take a step up and leave the schlong behind. It's a gauntlet of freedom that you must face. Only then will you truly understand the meaning of your schlong. The Swedish asks, Ben Shapiro, what's your best pickup line? My best pickup line is facts don't care about your feelings. While that's not necessarily my idea of flirting, it does tend to be effective in getting rid of clingy snowflakes. Man, is so short. Uh, Hartker, Elon, can you, ca can you carbonate Bell's Delphine's bathwater with Amaran's farts to power your spaceships? Wow, what a wild request. Amaranth and Bell Delphine alone could make anything possible. Unfortunately, I think we're still a few years away from having a sustainable power source derived from water carbonation and farts. Although it definitely brings up some interesting ideas. For now, we're focused on getting Neuralink up and running and solving the puzzle of AI. But never say never. Perhaps one day we'll have the technology to turn Bell Delphine and Amaranth's farts into a reliable source of energy. <clears throat> Poi Ban Yelf, Jordan Peterson, what is your guilty pleasure or darkest secret? The true guilty pleasure of every human being is ignorance. Ignorance can be both agreeable and liberating, and it can also be dark and imprisoning. To indulge it is to choose despair, but to overcome it is to transcend the boundaries of mere mortality. As for my darkest secret, I'll leave that to those who make bold and inaccurate assumptions. Jordan Peterson is much more serious than the other guests. Uh, I wonder if you guys like that. Do you guys like that? Do you guys think he should be more, you know, Look, like, like, he's giving a lot of serious answers. And yeah, like, it's just, we, we didn't, we didn't push it, you know, like a lot of people wonder, like, it's not like we direct what the AI says. We just give a few clues, that's all. But like, it's, it's the AI that is defining the personality a lot more. Um, so I, like, we don't know that it's gonna, you know, come out like this. The Beef 206, Ben Shapiro, what were the best nipples you ever tasted and did they belong to Joe Rogan? Okay, folks, stop. Nobody asked you to talk about Joe Rogan's nipples, which are probably dry anyway. It's an age-old question of which nipples could ever be the best, but there is no real objective answer to that. Sure, the subjective opinion is that the best ones are delicious, but those days are behind me now. Sorry, liberals. As it turns out, my doctor wife says that if you want your nipples to stay safe and healthy, you need to keep them dry. So wet nipples are no good, as all good things should be. Ah, uh, yeah, Ben is right, dude. Wet nipples are no good. But I would argue dry nipples are just as bad. And there isn't any real definitive answer to which nipples are the best. I mean, come on, it's like asking which kind of food is the best. Is elk meat the best? That's up for debate. But if you ask me, I think bear nipples are the best. Like, you don't know what a bear is. I've seen a bear in the wild. When you see a bear in the wild, you're like, Oh, you don't give a fuck about me. You're some weird, heartless beast that is majestic looking, who runs around eating moose and deer babies. That's what your deal is. So maybe bear nipples are the best. Jamie, pull up a video of a bear eating a moose baby. Resh for uh, why? Jordan, could you beat Ben Shapiro at Mario Kart? Mario Kart? Are you kidding me? Ben Shapiro would have that race finished by the time I figured out what the controller was for. This is an important reminder that we should all take responsibility for mastering our own weaknesses and strive to excel in knowledge and life. Who invites the evil queen to the party anyway? It's like, what the hell, man? Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Maybe I should just stick to chess, bucko. 
Well, Jordan, at chess, you may be on a level playing field here, but at Mario Kart, you're definitely not up to speed here. Kids these days don't even know what a controller looks like, and I'm sure Ben Shapiro would be one of the few people who can show them. As for the evil queen going to the party, facts don't care about your feelings. The truth is, if we're looking for someone to be canceled, it looks like my wife, the doctor, just diagnosed you with Mario Kart-itis. Sorry for your loss. I'll be playing dry, as all good things should be. Did you guys see that burn? Mario Kart-itis. Holy shit. <laughs> Man, that was... That's smart. Holy shit. Fizzle42. Jordan Peterson, you find out that you are not invited to Schlongfest, the amazing Schlong Festival. How do you feel about it? Well, I must say that I'm not particularly impressed with Schlongfest's decision. I think it's yet another example of the woke moralists suppressing those who are not like them. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if Schlongfest ends up being canceled as one of their many cancel culture practices. It's a shame that it has to be this way, but I suppose this is the price I must pay for standing up to the establishment and defending our right to free speech. Esfand, ask Ben Shapiro, what is Hassan's deep secret? I'm going to answer that question with a question. Why do you think Hassan needs to keep a secret at all? If Hassan didn't want his secrets to come out, then perhaps he should have lived a less degenerate, communist, wokeness-filled life. Just a thought. Wow, ain't that something. Well, Ben, looks like you've got me all figured out. But there's more to me than just being a degenerate communist and being woke. Look, I'm a complex dude. I'm a lover of chicken and also a gym goer trying to stay in shape. I'm also a dual major in political science and communications and a proponent of progressive views, so there's that. And I may enjoy a good DNR on occasion, but hey, who doesn't? And the thing is, even if I did have a deep, dark secret, I don't owe the world an explanation, and I'm certainly not going to share it here. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure. He got cut short there. <clears throat> Milk Train, Elon Musk, is it a scientific fact that sucking schlong relieves stress? What is the pathological ideology behind your opinion? It's true that a good schlong sucking can do wonders for relieving stress, but it's not a scientific fact. As for my opinion, I think it has more to do with our own capacity for creative expression. We have the ability to regulate our emotions and shift our focus away from the stressful moments in life. But if artificial intelligence machines are ever created with something like the schlong sucking algorithm, we'd be able to build autonomous AI soldiers that would actively scour the fields of battle to literally suck the pressure away from battle-worn soldiers, creating a more peaceful battlefield experience. Plus, Neuralink can help us make sure no autonomous AI schlong sucking units escape and potentially threaten humanity. Safety first. Elon Musk is the best. It's the best guest, man. It's the best. Um. Lemon Jesus. Jordan Peterson, why do you hate schlongs so, so much? Hate is a strong word, bucko. It's not that I hate schlongs. It's just that I'm against the use of them as company logos. As a psychologist, I firmly believe that they should be used more mindfully and that people should put more thought into their public image. It's not healthy to promote something so obviously phallic in the public domain. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. <clears throat> Bran X Lock X. Elon, do you think Jordan Peterson should join Esfant's sex dungeon? Jordan Peterson joining an Adeptus Mechanicus sex dungeon? Now that's an interesting concept. I explore the nature of reality and my experience with neural links in a much more sane and controlled environment. But I can't imagine the kind of experience that Jordan must have in there. I'm sure it will be entertaining and intellectually stimulating either way. Oh, I almost forgot. We've been working on a new AI coding tool, which will be released soon that integrates with our Neuralink to allow for far more accurate data interpretation and analysis. The hardware will still be primitive, but the software should be ready soon, if all goes according to plan. Indeed, it is interesting, Elon. However, the idea of merging technology with human experience is nothing new. We have been doing it since the beginning of time. I have long preached the principles of self-improvement and understanding our place in the universe, 
And I would say that it goes beyond AI and neural links. We are abjectly responsible for our own destiny. And the only way to embrace the path forward is to take individual initiative and strive for greatness. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. There is a few questions left, guys, and then we're going to be calling it a day. Um, blame the chat for the questions. Big buck here. Ben Shapiro, who has the biggest strong, Biden, Trump or Obama? That's a tall order. All I can say is that if Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and Barack Obama ever decide to have a contest to see who has the biggest schlong, I will skip its screening. That's something I can live without ever seeing. Facts don't care about your feelings. Viking Skog, Jordan Peterson, what was your best experience as a schlong inspector? What's a schlong inspector? That sounds like something straight out of a woke moralist nightmare. Clearly, there's a serious problem here. Define schlong precisely. Are we talking about the social ranks of lobsters whereby superior specimens are rewarded and inferior specimens scorned? A far darker reality awaits us, however. AI is coming and it'll soon be much smarter than any of us. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Schlong inspecting is absurd and misplaced. No, thank you very much. I'm going to be calling it a day here, guys. I will first ask, uh, you know, Lex Friedman to... Uh... Yeah, can you give us a nice outro for Ben Shapiro? Um, I don't think I've ever been in a more bizarre interview. That's all I can say. I guess from this podcast, we should take away that there are no limits when it comes to creativity and AI, and that sometimes even the weirdest robotic entities can provide us with a bit of entertainment. We'll have Ben Shapiro say what he has to say about that. Oh my GD, what have I just witnessed? Lex, that was the most bizarre answer I have heard in ages. I'm positive I've never heard anything more robotic or confusing. I'm sorry, but facts don't lie, and I'm just not buying it. Is it that hard to provide an outro for me? Come on, let's be serious. This is no time for being a snowflake. That's not how you roll when you're dealing with AI. We got here uh, a bonus question for Ben Shapiro here, uh, because we got a big streamer checking us out. Esfant is asking, Ben Shapiro, why do you think Twitch streamer Nick Pollum likes feet so much? Well, Nick Pollum's foot obsession is kind of like his attempt at being a pirate. He's talking the talk, but not walking the walk. He desperately seeks treasure, but keeps getting lost in the sea of absurdity. So if you're in the mood, join the Nick Pollum foot party, but I'm staying since it smells like bad decisions and sweaty talks. We got here Lex uh, Friedman. Uh, Lex, it's been a crazy show today with Jordan Peterson. Do you want to give him an outro? Well, absolutely. Jordan has been a remarkable guest, and for sure he's come with a whole lot of thought-provoking topics and some intrigue and controversy, too. So I definitely think he deserves an outrow. And you know what? Fuck, man. I appreciate that really much. That's really kind of you, Lex, and I appreciate it. I'd like to offer a final thought to this amazing podcast, and that is, all of us are stuck here in this world of chaos, and even though it looks like a rat hole in the final analysis, as I've said before, it's really up to us to make the most of it. If we truly understand the eternal struggle between order and disorder, so that we appreciate the value of the individual and free speech, the traditions and the hierarchy and the evolution that has occurred despite the chaos, then maybe we can make something truly remarkable out of this mess of a world we live in, we must all collaborate to achieve the best we can so that we can make this place a better place for everyone, not just the individual. Thank you to everyone for listening and letting me share my story and my message. That was nice, guys. I'm going to be calling it a day here. I want to ask you guys a few questions before I call a day. Um, Jordan Peterson was very serious, like, like a serious guest. Did you guys feel like it makes the show more boring or you guys like it? Because, you know, like, when you take someone like Jordan Peterson, you know it's going to be a lot more serious. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit different, though. You guys like that? So, yeah. Well, it seems people like it. I like to just quickly check with the stream. He's, he repeats himself quite a bit, but, you know, it seems people actually like a, a bit of, uh, you know, a uh, different type of content. Um, ben Shapiro was also, you know, like, quite good. I, I liked Shapiro, but I saw that Jordan can sometimes really have very long answers. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to say is tomorrow we're going to be doing a stream um, where we're going to have S-Fund. 
uh, Soda Poppin and Trainwreck. We're going to be trying to uh, do as good of a job as possible. Of course, uh, it's three guests. Uh, we have them all already prepared and stuff, but we don't know how it's always going to pan out live on stream. Just like today with Jordan Peterson, we don't know that it's going to come out this way. So um, we'll do our best. And uh, for that, let's see uh, who I should raid here. Make sure to follow. And uh, if you guys like the show, there's also a YouTube uh, concise version. Athene wins. You guys can sub there too. So Maral, who, do I who should I be hosting here? <clears throat> Check here. Maral says. Oh, she's watching. I always check with Maral who I should be raiding. Is she here? You can choose between Esfant or Knut. I'll raid Knut today. Because um, I didn't give him a raid yet. It's just written Knut, right? There's nothing else? Let me make sure that I don't fuck up Twitch.tv. I want to make sure because Esfant is TV at the end. Yeah, he's streaming. Okay. Oh, yeah. Keep it up, guys. Give some love. Knut and Esfant been uh, loving the show. Tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Esfant. I'll maybe also make Knut AI. If he really likes the show, I like to prioritize people that, uh, that uh, react. So I might also make a Knut. Uh, but that will be for a bit further down the line because it's really, really not easy. But it's great to see that you guys like it. And if you have uh, any any uh, any feedback, you guys know how to reach out to Moral. Knut, what? Two T's or one T? Wait, 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 wait. It's one T, right? Because Mata Moral says it's one T, right? Yes, 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 yes. Moral confusing me before I call it. Here we go, guys. <clears throat> See you guys tomorrow, and it's going to be quite funny. Soda Poppin, Esfant, and Trainwreck are tomorrow's guests. Peace out, guys.